Hello. In this lesson, we'll talk about the software development lifecycle. I'll explain to you the general steps that are taken to develop software and the definitions of each phase of the software development lifecycle. So let's go ahead and get started. So what exactly is the software development lifecycle? The software development lifecycle, or SDLC, are the general steps that are taken by software development teams to produce working software. Each step defines a phase of the software development project. During each phase, team members will have different responsibilities that help drive software towards final production. Some of these steps may overlap, but, are, but they generally define where the project is in respect to developing the final product. If there's difficulty in some steps, then the project may fall back to a previous step to fix the problem. For example, if a severe problems are found during the test phase, the project may need to go back all the way to the design phase to fix the problem. Although there are many variations of this process and companies may have their own proprietary model, the following represents the general steps of the SDLC. These are the feasibility study, requirements analysis, design, code, test, deploy, and operate. Now, let's go through each one of these steps in a bit more detail and see how they all fit together in the process. The very first step in the process is the feasibility study. This process may be skipped for very small projects, but it can be a critical step for extremely large projects. In this phase, the project is looked at holistically to determine the general time frame, the approximate budget, and the number of staff that will be required. In this phase, project staff will determine if the project can be fit into the existing company budget and resources. In addition, staff may also determine if there's already software on the market that can be purchased or software that can be purchased and modified instead of developing a custom product. This is referred to as the buy versus build scenario. The outcome of this phase is an approval or rejection from company management whether or not the project will be approved or not. If the project is approved, it will then have an established budget and time frame for the software to be developed. Once the project is approved, it will then move into the requirements analysis phase. In this phase, business analysts will build a complete requirement specification to determine the exact functionality of the software. These specifications will include detailed business rules that can determine the low-level functionality that is required for the system. It will also include security requirements such as various user roles that are required in the system. You can also include such things as use cases that will define basic usage scenarios for the software. Specifi specifications can also include sample screen designs that will help developers during the coding phase. In addition, this is a great time to define reporting requirements for the system. This is often overlooked, but it's a great time to include this analysis since reporting requirements define what data you need to store in the system. It's much more expensive and complicated to add additional data to the system after it's deployed rather than dealing with this in the requirements phase. Once the requirement specification has been completed, the project will move into the design phase. In this phase, designers will map specific requirements into designs. These de designs will include both logical models and physical models. The logical model will determine the groupings of software components that are necessary to meet basic requirements. Physical designs will include hardware elements that are necessary to host the software to meet basic usage requirements, such as the number of concurrent users that will be using the system, the availability of the system, and the types of usage scenarios that the system will need to deliver. The physical designs will include server topology, network components, any mobile devices that are required, and perhaps desktop computers as well. The goal of the design phase is to provide developers all the information they'll need to develop code to meet the basic requirements of the system. This is perhaps the most well-known phase of the software development lifecycle, the coding phase. In this phase, programmers will begin to write code to map out all the functionality of the system. Programmers will look to reuse code they've developed on previous projects to save time in their development efforts. In addition to developing code, programmers will also develop unit tests at this point to ensure the code that they're developing meets basic functionality requirements. 
In addition, many projects will begin to do demonstration to customers at this point to make sure there are no surprises for the customers in the end product. The earlier problems can be found in the SDLC process, the cheaper and easier they are to fix. Once code goes in production, fixing bugs and missed requirements can be very expensive. The last major phase of the SDLC before production is the test phase. If projects are running behind schedule and over budget, it's often tempting to cut short on the test phase. Doing this can be a risky proposition and mostly results in programmers delivering a low quality system. Developing test cases is a critical step in this process. Quality testing will require a high level of participation from business customers to ensure the system performs well once it goes into production. This can be difficult to do since most organizations have difficulty in sparing additional staff for testing. In addition to functionality uh, testing the system, load testing should also be performed at this point. This will determine how well the system will perform during peak demand. Failure to test this can be very catastrophic. There have been a number of high failure high profile failures in large system development projects that have encountered problems when the system was rolled out under full load conditions. Perhaps the most famous is the US government's rollout of the healthcare software that saw many frustrated users trying to use a system that performed poorly under high load conditions. Fixing this after the fact was a lengthy and expensive process. This is only one of many high profile software projects that have encountered this type of problem. So once again, if you can simulate a load before it goes out into production and ensure that it'll work properly, it will save your users a lot of frustration and also save your project a lot of money as well. Once the testing is successfully completed, the software will then be deployed into the production environment. These deployments are generally scheduled on off hours or weekends as to not disturb users of the existing system. In addition, large systems may be rolled out in phases or one portion of the system at a time. User training may also be done at this time as well. Large systems will also require a communications plan to alert users when the new system will go into production and how they need to prepare for it. After the system is deployed, the system will then go into operations mode. In this phase, help desks are formed to support users, fix problems, and alert server personnel and programmers about major problems that users have encountered. Server maintenance and patching operations will also be scheduled at this point. Routine maintenance operations such as backups, operating system patches, and security patches are scheduled into the rotation at this point as well. Although the software is operational at this point, most projects will continue to develop new features as they're required by the users. The need for future development causes the process to repeat itself. This is the cyclical part of the software development process. The difficult part for company management is since this process is continuous, it will continue to be an expense for the company. At this point, the company will need to determine an operating budget for the system. Many times the cost for this is underestimated and become a true nightmare for an organization that did not anticipate a high runtime cost. In summary, the SDLC has several distinct steps or phases. Software development projects move from one phase to the next after completing each one. Also, some steps may be repeated if problems are encountered in a particular phase. Many companies also develop their own proprietary models that they use during this process. Even though they develop their own processes, it's still generally based on the phases that are described in this lesson. Understanding the basic steps of the software development lifecycle is necessary for any programmer, since this defines what the development team will be doing to produce a working project. Software development projects are far more complicated than just writing code. I hope this lesson is giving you a solid understanding of the SDLC. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.